this is Jen from stampwithjen.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this pretty card with the tulips in the boots. You'll need one of my favorite stamp sets from the annual catalog, Varied Vases, and a brand new stamp set under my umbrella from the Stampin' Up! mini catalog. The two punches I'm using are the Scalloped Tag Topper Punch and the Vases Builder Punch. For inks, I'm using Coastal Cabana Blushing Bride Pool Party Granite Apple Green and Memento Black. For art base, I'm using Pool Party. I'm going to need a piece of Whisper White 4 and a quarter by 2, just some strips of Blushing Bride. And then this little piece here is a piece of paper from the Pleased as Punch Designer Series Paper, which is available in February and March of 2020. It's a specialty paper. I'm using two blends markers and this shimmery crystal effects, which is, although it was in the holiday catalog, is still available. So I'm going to start by stamping with the black ink onto this Pleased as Punch paper so that my boots fall into sort of a striped pattern and I need two of those. I'm going to punch the white paper that's been perfectly sized for this scallop tag topper punch and it gives that beautiful little tag on the top. To open the new style ink pads, you open them like a compact. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp a saying from the Under My Umbrella stamp set in Coastal Cabana ink at the top of the tag. Now I'm going to use my Blushing Bride ink and the Blushing Bride paper and a little tulip from the Varied Vases stamp set. I'm going to stamp one and then I'm going to use my punch to punch it out. And the reason you want a little tiny strip is we only need to punch that one piece out. We don't need to punch everything. So I'm going to punch one out just so I can get the spacing down pat before I stamp the other couple. So you can see it punches it out perfectly. It only takes a second to line it up. And what you want to do is you want to use your punch upside down so that you can see what you're doing. You slide it in through the top, get it positioned properly, and then squeeze down gently so you sort of lock it in place and then squeeze to punch. So I've got my three tulips ready to go. And next I'm going to cut out the little boots. Now it only takes a second to cut these out because they're pretty straight angles. And so I'm just gonna use my paper snips and I turn the paper around as I go to cut out the image. And then on this second one, I'm going to cut out just the top boot so that I can lay it on top and look, make it look more three-dimensional. So I'm going to lay the boots on here for positioning purposes. And then I'm going to take my Granny Apple Green ink and some stamps from the um, Varied Vases stamp set to basically stamp them as if they're appearing um, coming out of the boots. So I'm going to do the three tulips, so I'm going to do three stems, and you can turn this stem around to give it a different angle. It also, this stamp set has little leaves and all sorts of pieces. Um, it's got outlines of leaves and just the solid leaf, which is what I'm using here. And I'm doing a couple of those. Again, you can turn the stamp around so that you get the leaves looking like they're in different positions. And although it doesn't look great down to the bottom, we know the boots are going to cover that up. So then I'm going to take dimensionals and I'm going to add those to the boots. And I'm using the mini dimensionals here, which are perfect for little things. I'm going to stick those on. And I always love popped up pieces on a card. I feel like it, it's part of what is nice about a handmade card is that you can add these elements. So I'm going to pop the second boot on top so it really looks three-dimensional. You can kind of see that here on the side. Okay, and then I'm going to add the tulips using my mini glue dots for the simple reason that it's just easier to use a glue dot rather than try and put snail on this little wee tiny thing. It has the added bonus of popping it up just a little bit. Plus their glue dot is a lot stickier than just regular adhesive, so it, those little elements won't fall off. How cute are these little wee striped boots with the matching little tulips coming out of them. Love this. So sweet. I've already pre-scored my card base in half, so I'm just going to fold it and give it a nice firm 
fold with the bone folder. And then I'm going to take my Coastal Cabana ink with the little raindrops from the Under My Umbrella stamp set. Love these little raindrops so I can see them using them lots of places. Now you'll see on my um, at the end I've got a card that I made ahead of time with this and I used the Pool Party um, raindrops on there which also look nice. These are just a little bit more defined. So I'm going to um, put this paper this please just punch and I'm actually using the reverse side not the pretty part that you can actually punch out but I love the green on here and there's four sheets in these packs so there's lots to use and now I wanted to use this white seam binding ribbon but I decided that it was a little plain looking and I wanted to um, bring in some of the colors that I had used already so I'm going to um, first of all cut myself a piece that's roughly going to tie a bow so I just roughly tied a bow to see how much I needed and then I'm going to take my light pool party marker and I'm going to try and just give a bit of a stripe on the one edge of this. So I found it was easier to turn it around to have it towards me. And I'm just trying to get one edge. So it's very light and faint, but you can see there that it's changing the ribbon from white to this light pool party color. And it's, what's nice about this is, first of all, alcohol markers dry quickly but also it's seam binding so it's very light ribbon so it's actually dry really fast like almost immediately and then I'm going to once I've got one side done I'm going to flip it over and use the granny apple green still the brush tip and you notice I'm using the brush tip on its side so it doesn't wreck it and then I'm going to do that and now I've got this pretty multi-striped ribbon so dimensionals on the back, of course, because we have to pop things up. This is on the back of the tag. And I'm going to put that on. I like a little bit sideways. It's kind of cute. And then I'm going to tie that pretty multicolored ribbon. So how nice it looks with the card colors. And to tie a bow, um, I just fiddle with a bow and my fingers to get it looking right, starting with kind of a rough big bow and then just manipulating it till it looks right. Some people will tie a bow around like the top of their uh, Stampin' Mist so they have something more stable to work with. But whatever works for you. You can see I didn't like that bow I did and I restarted it. I just wanted to have a little longer tails on this bow and I'll show you why in a second. So it doesn't take much to just kind of fiddle. It's really just practice to get a good bow. And then what you want to attach a bow with is glue dots. They're again stronger than a regular tape and I usually put a couple on there and I'm not going to tie my bow through that little loop I'm just going to put it right in the loop and it looks like it's been tied through there okay so I have these lovely long tails on the bow and I'm going to well, want them to make them look a little prettier than they do right now so what I've got this cool little technique that I do where I use a glue dot to help position the bow where I want it to be but then I'm going to take um, a glue dot and, and basically add a bit of a ruffle to it. So doing that I kind of hold the ribbon up with my little paper piercer so there's a bit of a ruffle. See right there there's a little bit of a, a bump and it just makes it look like the ribbon is sort of laying more naturally in a ruffled position. So the trick is again you put the glue dot down and then you hold the ribbon up a little bit so there's a little bit of a ruffle happening and then down you can kind of see it happening there it's very subtle but it's just a nice look as opposed to just leaving the ribbon flat and then you'll want to trim your ends off at an angle using your paper snips so next I'm going to add some sequins to the project. Um, I picked the green ones from these Gingham Gala um, sequins. There are some lovely flower images that I wanted to use and it's really close match the green so it's just really subtle but when you kind of look at the cards you'll see that extra little bit of shine and bling and it looks really pretty. You want to make sure when you're adding embellishments that you use odd numbers like I've done five sequins here. It just looks better. So here's the first card I made and it's got like I said the pool party raindrops in pool party as opposed to the coastal cabana so it's just a preference how dark you want those to be. 
So next I'm going to use the Shimmery Crystal Effects and I'm going to put a blob on each of the boots and I'm just going to use a paintbrush. This is actually just from the dollar store, it's nothing fancy. And I just wanted this um, to use, to put a nice shine on the boots because rubber boots are typically shiny. Now the added bonus is it's got a little bit of glitter in here too so it's lovely. So I'm just painting it on in um, horizontal stripes so it'll match the horizontal stripes on the boots when it dries if there's any brush marks in it and then you just want to set it aside probably five minutes max to dry if you've got a nice thin coat but look how shiny and shimmery that makes those boots just love it i hope you enjoyed my tulip in boots cards and if you'd like to catch more videos from me make sure you click on the subscribe button below and check back to stampwithjen.com often for other tips, tricks, and ideas. Thanks so much for watching.